All right. This is Jeff Sloan just welcoming you to the program uh, uh, on behalf of Startup Nation. We're thrilled to be part of the Detroit Startup Week. This is such a great week for so many reasons. Of course, on the surface of it, it's a great opportunity to learn. Uh, but underlying it all, you know, the thing I love about it, it's great to be in the culture of entrepreneurship. It's great to be in the mix. It's great to see people doing it. It's great to learn that others may be struggling or having a challenge that they're trying to overcome and are overcoming in most cases. Uh, and so just being in the mix here at Detroit Startup Week is such a great thing for our region. It's inspiring, it's informative, and uh, we're thrilled and thankful. So. Uh, with that, let's get right into another session where we get to talk to a really cool entrepreneur making waves right here in our region. Um, we've got Stephen Major. Stephen, you're CEO and co-founder of Ash and Erie. Uh, good to have you on. We're looking forward to hearing your story. Tell us about it. Tell us what yeah, you thank do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you having, having us on as well. So Ash and Erie started in 2015. Um, before that, I met my co-founder, Eric through Venture for America. We both worked together for a couple of years at a Detroit-based startup, Waymark. I was on the business side, he was on the technical oh, side. Sure. And we really, we really loved being at the startup. We loved trying to build something from the ground up. And we were ready for the next step in our own careers. We're ready to take things and really focus on things ourselves. And so we were trying to think of startup ideas and business ideas. And you know, we, could, we were coming up with a lot of bad tech ideas, things that we just really had no experience in at all. Um, but eventually we started, we were trying to think about, or we were encouraged to think about problems in our own lives. So we said, all right, what are the biggest problems in our own lives? And you know, I actually texted my then girlfriend, now wife, and I said, what do I complain about the most? And she immediately replied and said, I hate shopping with you. And that was really the light bulb moment. Could have, been a, could have been a lot worse. That's not bad. What was that? No, I mean, what, you know, what is it you don't like about me? Or what is it that bothers you most about me? The shopping. I said, it's the, look, it could have been a lot worse, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's much worse than, right. No. Could have been a lot uh, worse than she doesn't like the, that you don't like shopping. So, or the way you shop. Go ahead. For sure. And so, it, yeah, she said she hated shopping with me. And that was the light bulb moment. Like, I can never find clothes that fit well. I go to the mall. I try something on. It doesn't work. If I get kind of lucky and it's okay, I still have to take it to the tailor, spend 30 bucks, wait a week. And you're really butchering something that's not made for you at all. And that's not a great shopping experience. That's not something that anybody should have to go through. But that's really been the only choice for shorter men. So when we first came up with that idea, we started talking to our friends and family and realized it wasn't just us as two short guys. It was really every shorter guy we talked to that had this problem. And that's when we said, all right, let's make it happen. So we started by designing the best possible untucked shirt for shorter men. And really from there, the last five years, we've been dedicated to expanding our wardrobe making great clothes that all start from the ground up for guys who are, are shorter men like us and, and building a brand that our customers can be proud of. Um, it's been a fun and exciting journey. We had a nice Shark Tank appearance in 2017 and um, some other, other great startup experiences as well. But ultimately, the goal is really to say, let's have the best possible brand that's finally for guys who have been forgotten about. Well, we definitely want to hear about the Shark Tank experience. That's always... Uh interesting shall we say I, I know that for sure we want to hear about that in a second before we get to that i have to ask i mean this is a bold undertaking you know getting into creating a fashion brand this is not for the faint of heart this is the, it's a tough crowded marketplace and so on the you, you, you discovered a need based on your own experience which is where great ideas come from that's that's a really a good way to find a great idea to start a business around but was there really no i mean the the, the size the range of sizes available and so on they don't work uh, for the shorter men category? Yeah, it's, it's crazy if you think about it. You know, you, for guys who are average, you can shop in most stores, right? That's okay. And if for a guy who's big and tall, you have a big and tall section of the stores, you have stores just dedicated to big and tall. And for women, you have plus size and petite for people who aren't average on the women's side. But there's really nothing, and it's the missing category in fashion, is taking care of shorter men. And I think that for a long time, shorter guys just had to live with a bad fit or try to get lucky finding something. A lot of our customers now actually used to shop in the kids section, which is something that no adult wants to do. Um, but I think you had to live with a bad fit or get lucky. And that was it. And I think in the last decade, you know, guys care more about how they look. They want a brand that's made for them. The internet and e-commerce coming up means that we can have smaller brands that have a wider scale. 
you know, within our first couple of months, we were shipping to all 50 states and we, we shipped to 30 different countries and you know, we can have that global impact because we're an online business. And so there really hasn't been anything, you know, the experience beforehand was get lucky, go to a tailor and live with something that doesn't quite work. Um, and for us, a lot of the little details in our clothes and the things we design, that's what, what's really special. You know, it's, so, yeah, we sort of the length compared to traditional shirt and the sleeve right, length is better right. and like that. But it's also the small details, our collar, the proportions, the armhole. Every little thing is saying, hey, we're making this for you. We're not taking something made for a guy who's six foot and chopping off a few inches here. Mm-hmm. So the, the, and you, you said you're really good at design. Uh, and I was going to ask you about that because it's one thing to fill a need with a product. It's another where, you know, uh, as fickle um, as, the, as the fashion consumer marketplace is, you've got to design for the current tastes and styles and demands that that marketplace has. Who had that experience? You know, how, how, where did you guys, is that a natural thing that you had that you possessed and put to work in this, in, in, in this opportunity or what? Yeah, great question. So I'll be the first to admit, I am not the one designing the clothes firsthand, and that's a good thing for everybody. Um, you know, we, we found great people. Love that t-shirt, support. the black Eric, t-shirt. That, that, that's a good look you got on right there. I love that. Yeah, thank you. It's one of our Ashton right. Um So Eric and I, our backgrounds are more on the online side, and, and we really were confident in growing a business and building a brand online, but we didn't have fashion backgrounds when we started. So very early on, we surrounded ourselves with wonderful people have decades of experience designing clothes, um, both on the fit side, more technical design, and on the style side with fashion design. Um, we, uh, we have a team now that, that does it. Everything is designed in Detroit. Um, we've surrounded ourselves with advisors and people who have a lot more experience than us to make it happen. So the reality is you now we, we knew that was the biggest hole in our business, the hole in our understanding. You know, we were good at some things, but not good at others. And we, we really quickly found some amazing people. So that's been, that's been special. And then it's just time. You know, so many brands just kind of use a standard. They, they go off of what other brands do. For us, we, we have to look at every detail. We have to start from the ground up. So sure. we'll use something as a starting point. But we really look at everything and say, how can we make this better for a shorter guy? Yeah. Um, it's just something that no other brand has really done before. And, and we're excited to be the first. And I think that as a brand, you know, it helps when you can focus on an audience that's been forgotten and, you know, say everything we do is for you. You don't have any questions. It's not like you're, you're going to order something from us that's going to be made for a taller guy. Every single item is made for someone like you. And you just don't have to think, which is how so many guys shop now um, who are average height, but the experience we want to provide to people who are. And are you going direct to consumer with the brand or, or are you uh, wholesaling to retailers who then uh, offer the brand to the consumers? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are 100% direct to consumer. Um, we, have done, we haven't done any wholesale or, or retailer experiences yet. We're, not, we're open to that. In the future, I think it would make a lot of sense to find a partner who can help more guys touch and feel our clothes. But right now, 100% direct consumer from our website. All Ash e-commerce. And All e-commerce. What, what was the website address? Ashandeerie.com. Yeah, ash, ashandeerie.com. We'll give that out again in a second. Um, Perfect. Let, let me, uh, I mean, you're well positioned. Direct to consumer is hot. Online e-commerce is hot. You know, those are, those are good spaces to be in. Uh, and, and, and so that's a good thing. But how do you get the word out? You know, how to, that's, a, that's a tough undertaking, right? Crowded space, expensive to get the word out for a brand like this. How are you doing it? Yep, good question. So I would say it's not a very crowded space. There aren't many other brands um, who have making clothes for shorter guys. But, you know, the thing that's unique about us versus so many other companies is that your height doesn't really dictate who you are. You know, height doesn't say you're in a certain career or hobby or interest. Whereas so many other companies are built around their things, whether it's right. hobby, career, and pets, family, kids. You know, for us, it's like, that doesn't say who you are. There are so many shorter men doing amazing things all around. And so I think that's been one of our challenges of how do we find customers in a way that we can hopefully scale and, and really grow the business when it doesn't have anything to do with your interests, hobbies, et cetera. Right, what you're talking about is targeting. Is, targeting. You, you can target to someone who likes fishing. You can target to someone who likes, you know, bowling, whatever it may be, right? That's what you're saying. It's, it's harder exactly. to, to find someone who's tagged themselves, identified themselves as shorter. Yeah, absolutely. And in a lot of ways, how do people even identify it, right? You don't really share your height on any places and publicly, and it's, you know, something that usually you know, but only you, know, you and your doctors or maybe your dating profile on it. Um, and that's about it. So... I think the biggest thing for us is because there are so many shorter men out there and we really are the first and, and one of the biggest brands to focus on this, 
that's how we've been able to, to find new customers. But we, we share our message with all men. We, we try to do what we can to really identify the style our customers love. And, you know, for the guys who are in our height, they try our clothes on and they keep coming back. And, you know, we're, we're always happy to spread the message. And if a taller guy sees it, it's, you know, you feel bad in some ways. Like, this isn't really made for you, but you can shop most other places. But for the shorter men who understand it and see it, there's usually a lot of excitement. Like, wow, I finally have this. I'm waiting for it. Yeah. And once they touch and feel like most, they're, they're pretty um, excited about that, too. Yeah, well, you've got a, a, a brand. You've got good design in, in your product offerings. Um, you've, pro- you. you've proven that there's demand for your product. You've got satisfied customers. Yeah. So you have validation of your product offerings and so on. But again, coming back to, for me, the most interesting aspect ac- academically, intellectually about this business model is again, how do you get the word out and really scale the business? So, um, right now you're driving, you're selling all online e-commerce. I would imagine yep. SEO is, uh, you know, I'll just run a list of a few obvious things, but uh, we can talk about whatever else. If you've got some secret sauce, we'd love to hear it. But SEO probably is a big component of what you're doing. Yeah, I think Fundamentally, you know, it has to be. Yeah. the way we approach it is there's not really a secret sauce in particular, right? I think that we try to do everything as well as we can. Um, you know, there are the basics like SEO and right. make sure that when you're searching for right. guy clothes or something related, that we're going to be one of the ones to pop up there. And we've actually focused recently on trying to get more and more content out there. Content Let's marketing, a, yeah or style and a resource for fit. And, you know, anytime you have a question about something related to height and style, you know, sure. we can be the one to make that happen. Um, you know, most of our, our, our biggest channel is still Facebook and Instagram, you know, the typical social media social, channels. Yep. That's where most brands advertise. Um, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, trying to find ways to help our customers increase word of mouth and, you know, being and helping people really hear about us. That's still the biggest challenge. Yep. You know, most people that's in right. America haven't heard of Ashton yet. And, um, you know, that, that takes a long time. And like you said, it can be expensive, but I think we do everything we can to spread the word, depending on where you are. You know, maybe you're a blogger who reads blogs and want to be there. Maybe sure. you're on Reddit and you want to make sure, sure, sure. you find us there. Maybe you're on social media. Maybe you're sitting in an airline and looking at a magazine, hopefully one day again, um, and you find out about us there. Or you're watching TV and, and find out about us through Shark Tank or an ad or something like that. So I think as we've grown, we've tried to find more and more ways to spread the word, depending on how you consume media, how you find different brands. Um, and, you know, I think we, it's our job to be in front of people in the ways that they're already looking versus, you know, trying to get them to try something new in that channel. Yeah. What about influencer marketing? Yep. So we, we have worked with some influencers. Um, I know there's the, one of the biggest shorter men's fashion bloggers, the modest man. Um, he, he does a lot of really great, honest reviews. He'll talk about products he loves, products that he has some feedback on. Um, and it's always special to have those, those types of people share messages and stories. Um, but we have, we have a number of influencers that we've really worked with and we're happy about. And on a kind of smaller and medium-sized scale, and on a larger scale, we actually also work with Muggsy Bogues, who is the shortest NBA player ever, um, Space Jam star. Yeah, something like that. He's awesome. Right, that's awesome. I mean, it seems to me that would really get noticed. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's just a great person. And I remember the first phone call we had, I asked him how he approaches his height. And it was basically, look, your, your brand and your you as a player is so identified to your height. And it's funny that people talk about just the talent and that they always focus on your height. And his, his answer was, look, this is the way that God made me. And I was able to play the way I did because of who I am. And I'm, I'm so proud of Ability. You know, I've been getting a lot of opportunities. I've been able to, to work hard. And this is who I am. And that is, is what made me. And I think it was that, that positive aspect of it, right. you know, not looking for the, um, that's awesome. And we also, as of recently, started working with Ken Rosenthal, and be reported, again, someone who's shorter. And a lot of times people see him on TV and I was like, oh, I didn't realize, you know, his height. Um, but he's someone who's so positive saying, like, look, this is who I am. And I want to help inspire other people no matter what they look like, their height, their size, whatever it is, I want to make sure that they can feel motivated and know that they can achieve their dreams. Yeah. So I think finding guys who really believe in that and, and want to be part of a positive mission and, and do what we all can to help shorter men look and feel their best, um, both through clothes and any other ways, that's, I think, what we're looking for. I've been really excited to spread the word. It's really about. great. Where's, what does the brand mean, Ash and Erie? So, you know, the name is actually rooted in Detroit. So Ash comes from the Detroit city motto, we will rise from the ashes. And Erie is a tribute to the region. 
Sure. And you know, when we first came up with the name, we wanted something that was fairly ambiguous, and we didn't want it to be too to define the brand just from the name in itself. Um, we wanted to be able to build the brand around it. But at the same time, Detroit was important to us. There aren't too many fashion brands here, and we knew we wanted to be in the city. So we tried to find use Detroit as the roots. Um, and in a lot of ways, you know, Detroit's an underdog city, and shorter men, I think, have been looked down upon for a long sure. time and, and often feel like underdogs in a lot of ways. So I think there's a lot of nice parallels there. Um, to what we're trying to build and, and the customers that we're working with. Okay, we got to talk Shark Tank. Got to talk Shark <laughs> Tank. How, how? First of all, how did you get on? Why? You know, did you go to an audition and you got selected, or how did? And who? And who did the pitch? Was it you or you and your partner? It was me and my partner. I don't want to spoil it. You have to watch the episode. Oh, that, um, no. oh, but it's aired it's already, so we could right? It's already aired. You did 2017 yeah, appearance. Aired yeah. in 2017. Okay. It's been a couple okay. of years now. Okay. Um, so, you know, originally we, we really heard, we ended up having a couple of producers reach out to us. Um, I don't know how they heard about us. It was right after we launched. That was pretty early on in the business. And they just said, hey, we, you know, it seems like a great idea. It seems like it's a big market. Um, you know, the, the person that reached out was also a shorter guy. So I think he understood the challenge himself personally. Um, they said, we encourage you to apply. And, you know, the application process is, is kind of crazy. It's fun. It's, you know, a lot of pages handwritten. It's a tape just talking about your business. And really, we just approached it as like, let's, what's the worst that happens? Worst that happens, we don't get on Shark Tank, nothing changes, and we had some fun making a video. Best thing that happens, we go on Shark Tank and hopefully find a great investor um, to work with. And so we, you know, we made a, a video highlighting the business. Um, Eric and I, I think just based on our personalities and the brand, we, we kept it fun and funny. Yeah. And there's a yep. point there where we camera pointed up above us and kind of went down. It's like, hey, we're down here. Um, <laughs> There's a part where Eric was ironing my shirt while I was wearing it. Okay. It's not a comfortable thing. But, who, who, are the you know, sharks, it, it, who are the sharks, I have to ask? Um, who are the sharks in our episode? Yes. So we had Mark, Damon, Lori, Kevin, and Robert. Okay. Good. That's the A team. It, it was great. I mean, I, I'm glad we had Damon. He's a shorter guy. He understands fashion. But, you know, ultimately for us, we applied. It was a long process. We got on the show. We're super excited to be there. Um, I think we kept it positive. We kept, we were very focused on what we were trying to talk about and do. And at that stage in the business, you know, we kept selling out of inventory and we didn't really have cash to buy more. So we had to wait to get sales and then put in more, buy more inventory, wait three months to get it made, sure. sell out again, rinse and repeat. So we really were looking for a partner to help us expedite that growth. Get and a little so bit of cash how there. did it go? Um, it went pretty well. So you know, we, we did the pitch to spoil a little bit. We did the pitch. There were some height comparisons. You got to sit next to a couple of the sharks. I almost put my arm around uh, Damon. But at, in the end, a few of the sharks went out. Um, Robert, Lori, and Damon decided to pass. And we were getting a little bit nervous there. Um, and then Mark made us an offer. Interesting. But he said he would only do it if we took the deal right then and there and no negotiating. And for the next couple of minutes, it was a little bit um, dramatic where Mark actually ended up backing out and then coming back in. But ultimately, got a deal with Mark. Um, we're super happy to have him as a partner. And I think it was, you know, we had fun pitching them. And then we had some fun with the, the drama at the end, which was just as nerve wracking in person as it looked like on TV. Why do you think Mark invested? You know, I think what, what he said uh, on the show, I mean, what he said on the show is, is really what it's an authentic episode. What you see is, is there. Um, but I think that he, he liked a couple of things. One is that we were focused, you know, when we were asked about retail and wholesale and new products and so many different things, I think a lot of entrepreneurs feel the pressure to be like, yeah, we're going to do it all. Right. Um, but for us, no, we want to keep doing what we're doing and scale it up, especially at that stage of the business. We, we had so much opportunity just scaling what we had already achieved. And it was just the two of us, right? We were still a much smaller company even than we are now. Um, and so I think he appreciated the focus and I think he appreciated just how large and underserved the market was. Um, you know, if you just intuitively, I think the sharks use their intuition a lot as to a lot of investors. It's like, if I say, can you think of a shorter men's brand? You, you can't, if, you know, there are no major brands for shorter men, but everybody knows shorter guys. You know, everybody knows that we exist and, and wear clothes and, you know, want options. And so I think understanding it, it's a big market and it's underserved and that we've done enough to prove that we have some traction, even though yeah. it's still pretty early yeah. back then. Um, I think that's what Mark was excited about. So can you share the deal that you got with us? How much and how much do you have to give up? Um, you know, to be perfectly honest, I don't remember on the top of my head. It's been so long. But I, I think if I remember correctly, it was, we wanted 100000 for 12.5%. And Mark offered us 150000 for 25%. Okay. And how um, has it been? You know, that's a dream to get Mark Cuban as an, as an investor. And, 
a lot of people think, you know, you get him as an investor, he's in, he's, he's going to be focused, you get a lot of his time. Is that the reality? How much interaction have you had with him? Yeah, you know, Mark is a big team that, that definitely helps out. Um, and, and, you know, I think we, they've been supportive. I think what's cool about Mark's team is that they, um, they work with so many businesses, right? A lot of our investors, and we have a number of investors who are super helpful. Like, they see so many more businesses than we do. We just see one business, they see a lot of different ones. And I think in that sense, just that exposure and, and having such a big network has been super, super helpful yeah. um, in, in, in certain ways. So um, that's, that's not, you know, not too much direct interaction, but definitely a helpful team. That's great. So listen, you made a decision a few years back to leave a startup, startup, create a startup of your own. How has it been for you? You know, kind of how would you paint the picture looking back now and looking forward to being an entrepreneur? You know, it's crazy that it, it's already been five years since we launched. Um, sometimes I look back and say, where did the time go? Um, it, it's funny. I, I think it's been great. You know, working at a startup was so, so helpful before launching our sure. especially the first time founders and, and you know, guys who are younger. I don't think we would have been successful without at least seeing what it takes to build a company. And I'm really glad that we worked at a startup that um, was, had so much hustle and, and was really passionate about what they were doing. So I think it, it gave us the culture and instilled that, that drive and the passion that you need to be successful early on, even before it was our own company. Um, I don't think we have any regrets about leaving. You know, we're, we're still friendly with the company and, and ultimately this is what we wanted to do and we're excited about. Um, but that startup experience early on was so helpful. Yeah. And looking back, I think it's, I'm really proud of what we've achieved. You know, we started with the two of us that you know, we, Eric and I spent six months living in my, uh, my grandmother's condo when she ended up moving to a nursing home. Um, before it was sold, my family sold it, we lived together. And we spent a couple months in an accelerator where we lived literally in the same bedroom. Actually, twice wow. we did that. These are great stories. Um, I mean, this is, this is the, these are the stories you'll remember, right? When you're a major national, international brand. Yeah, I am sure. I don't think we can forget it. You know, it's, it's crazy that you wake up, you know, go from being a, a real adult with a job and wake up <laughs> right. and your coach. You'll, you'll, know, uh, you'll know you earned it, that's for sure. All right, well, we've got about a minute left. Let's make sure we send people to the website. Uh, again, if they're interested in your product offerings, go to ashandeerie.com. That's A-S-H-A-N-D-E-R-I-E.com. Make sure you, you got su- it. Yeah, make sure you support this great brand right here in the Southeast Michigan region, Detroit region. We love it. You guys are, you're, you're great. Actually, had a chance to look at some of the products. I'm, I'm impressed with what you guys have done. It's a big undertaking. This is not the faint of heart, as I said at the, at the outset of the conversation. So kudos to you guys. Congratulations and continued great success. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, Stephen. Thank you so much. 